Hi everybody. In this short video I will talk about reproducible and reusable plots. But I would like to start by connecting reproducibility with the FAIR principles. And FAIR principles have been mentioned in a, in a different video in the series. And when we produce and share data and software and data visualization plots and figures, we try to make these fair, we try to make these findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And on this slide I also write a few typical problems that we can anticipate when working with data visualization. Here are typical questions which you may have already asked or you might have gotten these questions. On which of my external hard drives is my data visualization? Can you please give me access to the plotting scripts? In terms of interoperability, how can I convert this file format to the other file format? And finally, in terms of reusability, well, I wish I could reuse this visualization pipeline, which I developed some time ago, and now I would like to use it for my new data. So FAIR principles are really good for others, but they are also really good for your future self. So please ask yourself when creating plots, what problems do you anticipate when recreating this plot 12 months or later in the future? And one recommendation that I can give to everybody, please document all the tools and all the dependencies that you have used to generate uh, plots together with their versions. And now I would like to mention a couple of tools that help with this, that make this easier, and a couple of tools and languages which are very popular to, to achieve, to, with, to get plots which are reproducible and reusable. One of these tools is our Jupyter Notebooks. They are very popular in the Python community. This is a web tool that where you can collect code, Python code, that generates plots and text and, and equations, figures and plots, etc. All in the same place, interleaved and creating a computational narrative where we can execute code and we can, we can see the result in one place. And then we can modify and repeat in, in a kind of iterative conversation between, between researcher and data. And then we can share these notebooks. And the name Jupyter derives from Julia and Python and R. These are programming languages. But today Jupyter, Jupyter is, exists for dozens of programming languages. So this is not limited to Python. And with, the, with Jupyter Notebooks, what many research groups do is that they can actually share the whole workflow. And here's a very nice example of, uh, of a research group that was working on the, on the discovery of gravitational waves. They made their data visualization pipeline and their data available, publicly available on GitHub. So here's the notebook. And they have documented their dependencies and, and there exist tools like Binder, which make it possible for me to rerun their entire workflow directly in the browser. So I will start this as an example. This will take a couple of seconds to fire up. This Binder service is a free service uh, which now installs all the dependencies and the code and note that this is not now not running, these dependencies are not installed on my computer. This is now really running in the browser. Anybody can visit this page uh, uh, with a browser. And here I can now revisit all the steps. I can even try to modify them and see what happens if I change some parameters. So this is really reproducible, reusable data visualization. So this is a Jupyter notebook. Here's another example. Uh, this was a Stanford activity inequality study. 
uh, where they have been studying phone tracking data and how much people move and try to correlate uh, movement with uh, their daily activity with cell phone tracking in, in many different countries. And what is also interesting here is that, again, all the data, but also the data visualization is available on GitHub and you can try to rerun re re it. And here's a collection of many more examples of interesting Jupyter notebooks for all different academic disciplines. I also mentioned that, so Python is not the only language popular in data visualization. The other very popular programming language is R and R has something called R Markdown. It's the same idea as the Jupyter notebook uh, where we can have text and code all in the same place and it can produce plots. And just to show you how, how an R Markdown really looks, I will now compare the data visualization book by Klaus Wilke, which has been mentioned in a different video in this series. What I will do is I will compare the R Markdown with the actual with the actual chapter in the book, just so that you can see the what is the source and what is the result. So in the left panel is R Markdown, there is text and there is code. And on the right side, here is the corresponding text. And what I see on the right hand side are then the, the generated plots. And now anybody can go in and can rerun this and can modify this. So now in, in this really nice figure is a summary of how many students and researchers, the challenges that they face today when they, when they do data visualization. So it doesn't end with collecting data and collecting experiments. So here on top left is, is a student who has done their research work, but now she would like to, to make the data visualization reproducible so that anybody can verify and reuse their, uh, her plots. And one popular way is then to use Jupyter Notebooks or R Markdown, R Studio to make the, the code and the plots publicly available on a publicly hosted repository such as GitHub or Bitbucket or GitLab. And then one can use the binder service to make the notebook dynamically available for anybody to rerun. And one can even take it one step further and that would be to get a digital object identifier for the notebook to make it citable and to preserve it. And here I have two examples uh, where I run Jupyter Notebook and an R Markdown, R Studio Notebook using the binder service directly in the cloud. I will open up these examples. I put them both on GitHub. Both have documented dependencies and both I can now launch through the binder service. I will just start them because both will take a couple of seconds to install all the dependencies. So let me launch them and then I will show you how these look. So both are now installing, installing these dependencies. These dependencies are documented in these files. So this, this example uses two libraries and I have documented not only the libraries, but also their versions. And I have done something similar for the R example. And here my Jupyter notebook is already ready to be run. I can, I can start it up. Here it is. And I can run, I can run all the cells. And here it runs all these cells and it creates these plots. For this example, now it doesn't matter what, what we are plotting here. This is, I'm, I'm not going into any details about how Jupyter or Python, Python works. 
Let's have a look at the R Studio R Markdown example. Also, this I have launched through Binder. And those of you who have already used R Markdown and R Studio might be familiar to this interface. I can open up the R Markdown notebook and I can run everything. And here are some example plots. And really what is remarkable here is that anybody can run this and uh, I could attach this notebook to as a supporting information to my publication to make it really reproducible. So finally, I would like to summarize that there is a progression. I have mentioned two languages, Python and R. I recommend to learn the very basics in one of the two. Both are really good languages for data visualization and statistics. Pick one of the two, take the one that is maybe more popular in your academic community. It can also be a good idea to start learning right away inside a notebook. For Python, start with Jupyter. For R, start with R Markdown and R Studio. And then later, try Binder. And even later, learn how to get a digital object identifier for your binder. And now your plotting recipe can be cited and is re reproducible and is preserved. And this will take time, but it is okay to take time. I, I'm, I believe that this, will, this effort will really pay off to, for, to make your plots reproducible, not only for other people, but also for your future self. Thanks so much for watching.